Sorry if the end of that last video did not go well. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize I had not stopped recording. Sorry. Okay. The rest of this book deals with the skills, the feats, and the rules, um, a slight modification that they've made. So this is very pretty much a standalone game in the sense that it's the OGL, the 3.5 rules, pretty much in and of itself. Um, they've had some, they changed some of the uh, spells, specifically they changed Polymorph, and again they made it very much into the uh, Astral Construct mechanism where when you summon, when you change yourself into it, you pick a bunch of abilities, you put them onto yourself, and that's what you get. Same with the summon monster. You're not summoning a specific monster, you're summoning this thing that you were then customizing on the spot. Now, I understand why they did this, because there are a lot of ways to abuse summoning monsters or animals in the games. By doing this, they're limiting your options and making it more um, easily handled, less bookkeeping in theory. However, I don't see how waiting for someone to pick the monster they want to pick out of a bunch of books is any better than waiting for someone to build the monster on the spot that they need. I see no difference. It's it's six of one, half a dozen of the of the other. It doesn't seem to be an improvement in my book. I understand where they're coming from, and I appreciate they put the effort in. And it really does look like they use the astral construct rules from the expanded players uh, signing handbook, because that's the only place I think they could have got it from, because it's just too similar. Um, if they came thought of it, if they, if they thought of it on their own, it's convergent evolution. Um, they also rolled some of the skills together, like Pathfinder did. They chucked rope use out the window, and I completely understand that. Your average person should be able to tie things up without a problem. If somebody wants to do something a little more exotic, um, for example, they need to, to make harnesses or things like that in the wild, I would just say, okay, I would give you a DC and say roll into survival. If it was a sailor, I'd say give them a DC and roll on their profession uh, sailor skill. So um, I think that's a good way to do it. Now, one thing they um, they also changed linguistics, kind of the way Pathfinder made it a little more complex, made made putting points into it make more sense. Now, one thing they didn't do to profession, I'm thinking I'm what we'll, we'll be doing in the future, is make profession a one point skill. So, say you have craft five in metalworking, okay, or blacksmithing, we'll say, you put spend one rank of one put one rank into uh, profession, and now you have a rank five. It's tied to your blacksmithing skill. And as you go up in skill levels, ranks of blacksmithing, your profession goes up with it for no additional points. And you can do this for every single profession that you could think of. Tie it to any other skill you got. And you can come up with a profession tied to that skill. And then you can be a professional in that skill. And that's how I'm going to be using it in the future. Uh, make it one point or one rank, depending on how you look at it and not worry about it anymore. Boom, done. Um, they got rid of track, the couple of the feats they've changed here and there, nothing all that earth shattering. The rest of the game is about how they handle specific things like the action points, the magic system, their attacks of opportunity. So yeah, it goes into a fair amount of depth because and again, it's not a small product. They did a lot of work. It was worth my time to read, even though I fundamentally disagree with a lot of the decisions they came up with. Uh, in the equipment section, they suggested uh, discarding the spike chain, which I heartily endorse because I hate the spike chain. As they, as they say in, the, in this in this product, that the spike chain is the kind of thing that usually only appeals to one guy at the table. Everybody else thinks it's stupid, and it's so true. So I agree with them. Spike chain out the window. Um, so I don't regret buying this product. I don't regret reading this product. There are things in this that I will I will use. The fighter alone is worth the product the cost of this product. The work they did on the dissection of the 3.5 rules in the beginning of this book is just phenomenal. Um, uh, kudos, seriously, excellent work. Um, but I don't like action points. I don't like what they did to the magic system. Um, I don't want my first level characters having 30 friggin' hit points. Um, there are changes to the game I don't like that they made here. So, would I adapt everything in here? No. Am I going to adapt, uh, am I going to throw the whole book out? No. Do I think it's a mixed bag? Yeah, I do. But, I think it's worth a read, particularly if you're fond of the 3.5 OGL rules. 
Um, I am going to be ordering a copy of Fantasy Craft uh, next month, so I will be eventually reading that and show you how they handle reinterpreting the 3.5 rules um, and seeing how it differs from this product. Um, so I'm going to put this to my library, man. I think it's a good product to look at. I think it's nice to see how people handle these kind of things. Um, I just think they tried to outdo Pathfinder and failed, and they got a little too, a little too close to 4th edition for my taste. So it, it fell in this weird place, you know, this, the uncanny valley of role-playing games, if you will. Um, but overall, um, I think that they did some wonderful work. I'm glad they did it. I'm glad I own it. And if you like this rule system, I think you want to read it.